on some thoughts about paradigm shifts. Mm. You know what I mean by paradigm shifts? Yeah, I do. I do. Again, the old traditional way, like doing something totally new. Hallelujah. Even though our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, He has never changed from doing something new all the time. Amen to that. So he wants to encourage us to do something new. Even the way we talk. Yes. And the way we talk sometimes too. Different matter. There are three of you with one God. Or talking to one God. I'll come up. I'll come up to the first God. He says, what are you doing? And he says, I will just share a testimony with him. Then I come up with a second God. And I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm leading him to the Lord. And then I come up with a third God. And I said, what are you doing? Are we discipling him? Same. They're all doing the same thing. Yes. But you have a different picture of what we're doing. There's this picture that we need to grab hold of. For so long it's a religious argument about church and state. When the real situation is about kingdoms and nations. Amen. What you do can impact the nation. What I find most interesting is about the history of the church. The church, actually, that word church, I believe, or from what I, my study has shown me, actually comes from a Greek word called kirikion, which means belonging to the Lord. Like the Lord's Supper in 1 Corinthians. It's kirikion, what is it? We do for supper is. The real word about church it comes from the Greek word meaning ecclesia. Now, the Greek part of the ecclesia, whenever they set up a village or run a town or whatever, there was always the ecclesia, which was like the local council, the local governing body, the local body, authority body. It was never about a place where believers gather for the good time. You just think about it. We are the government yes. to this nation. Amen. We are part of the government to this nation. The government was put on the shoulders of Jesus. Yeah. And, yeah. and we as heirs and co heirs also have the government. Amen. The advantage work for the immigration department. For <laughs> well, that bring souls into the kingdom. Amen. So we are, in a way, part of the kingdom government. Yes. Which is much bigger than the local church that you go to. This is what you're all part of. And this is what I really want you to get a picture of. Our mission statement says, Australia, under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Anthony was challenged that by God some years ago. What do you see? What do you see? Can you see Australia under the Lordship of Jesus Christ? Yes, God went through a lot of... Hmm, I mean, nothing too difficult for him, but... <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> God's plan was for nations. He said to Abraham, I'm going to make you... I will have made you a father of many nations. Amen. And Jesus said, I want you to go and disciple nations. The, apostle, the, the disciples sat back and said, Lord, what, when is the kingdom going to come to Israel? Produced the answer to the Nation. Plural. Go and baptize 
thank nation in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. When you come to Revelation, it talks about nations coming into the kingdom. It's not just about this little chapter, it's about this. So I'm thankful that the Lord had led me on such an incredible journey since my childhood. Because my whole life has been about one of paradigm shift. Mm. When I was born, I was born deaf. Yes. And all the experts said, put him in an institute, he'll never get anywhere. Wow. And my parents had had a sense in their heart that no, mm. we must give him a chance that he's not a human. Wow. So I learned to speak. My mother would sit me as a baby on her lap. Wow. Button, 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 one, two, three, four. Good. Hand on my neck, hand on her neck. So I get the idea of sound. Yeah, yeah. So by the time I was four years old, I had a vocabulary of 40 words. Wow. No sentences. Gee. Until I went to an old desk school mm. in Melbourne. We lived in Brisbane. Yes. There was no old desk school in Brisbane at the time in the 1950s. Mm. Yeah, that's how old I am. Mm. <laughs> but we lived in Melbourne for 18 months and I could start putting words together into sentences oh, and start lip reading. Wow. God. And my mother always encouraged me to look at people, mm. read their faces. Are they understanding what you're saying? So I learned to experiment. Mm. One of the things that the deaf expert says impossible is that I've got tonal variation. Mm. I can change the tone. I just learned this by experimenting, yes. by watching people's reactions. Yes. But then of course after all that education, you don't leave it. That's where you get stuck into it. Because they said, well, great sex is as hard you can get. Mm -hmm. My dad said, no. Amen. So they put me in a public school. Hallelujah. And the deaf school headmaster tried to lobby the education department not to let me go to a public school. But fortunately, the headmaster of the public school said, he'll be fine. I mean, God had prepared the way. Yeah. So I had to go from a paradigm shift from old deaf education to normal education. Yeah. And then of course all they kept on saying, oh, you'll never get anywhere. Mm -hmm. I was the first Queenslander to break away from the old deaf education to go to full time school, yeah. public school. Yeah. Praise God. And not only that, to go to an Anglican boarding school for boys which was tough. You know what my nickname was at boarding school for boys? No. Dracula. Wow. <laughs> you know why? Boy. Because remember the old days of the blackboard with the chalk? Yeah. Squeak, yeah. squeak, yeah. squeak, squeak, yeah. and, and they'd be talking to the blackboard. Yeah. And I like to live me. So all I can see is this noise coming out of the back of the head. And so I'd miss out so much mm. on learning so much. The kids wouldn't help me either. I was their favourite tease. Oh, you know, bullying and whatnot. Mm. There's another story I'll come to that in a minute. Mm. So I used to have to go down to the teacher's common room mm. and ask the teachers, what's my homework? What's this? What's that? And so they said, well, I'm going down there to suck up to the teachers. So that's why they called me Dracula, mm. because I was a sucker. <laughs> Oh, it was awful. Yeah. But you get out, I got over it. Thank God that my parents taught me to have to strength in character. Thank God. God had given me strength of character for me. Fifty years later, mm. I went back to my school reunion mm. for my year. And they said, who's this? <laughs> George Perry. What are you doing back here? <laughs> I lost my 
may come in back here. We thought you'd never come back right after what we did to you. Wow. They all came up and apologised to me. Man. I said, for the forgiveness. Blew my mind. Glory to God. And you God had to be behind it. He's behind everything. <coughs> and we let him. Amen. And of course, all I want to do when I finish school is to go bush. Mm. My dad had a sheep and cattle property out near Charlesville in southwestern Queensland. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And I thought, oh, it'd be fantastic. Mm. Away from all this teasing. Mm. But the problem was that living a lonely life in the bush was bad for my speech, my communication skills, it just went down here. Yeah, absolutely. I lost, I was losing my ability to speak yeah. and to hear and to understand people. So I knew I had to get out of there. Yeah. But where? Until one day I had a better to protest some cattle for us. You know what protest the cattle is? You? Put a great big long glove in it, put your arms at the back side yeah. and see if you can find the car. Yeah. My dad was away. <laughs> in Brisbane on some business. Yeah. And my mother was there, taking all the figures down. I was doing all the cattle work, getting all the cattle up to him. Oh, while he was doing all that. And I was pumping him with questions after questions after questions. All of a sudden, he's uh, blown up and he said, What the? <laughs> he's wrong. Why don't you go and do that science yourself? Yeah. <coughs> I stopped. And he realised my mother was there. Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Perry. I shouldn't have swore like that. Could you forgive me? My mother said, Oh, that's quite all right. I quite agree with you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so the light came on. And what God had called me into. He just. Oh, he's a master manipulator. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But he, I loved it. So he manipulated me in that science. And again, had a, as that a paradigm shift. Mm. I was probably the first death vet in Australia. Wow. wow. A number of other vets have tried to claim that since, and every time that happened, that always a letter to the editor saying, like, hey, sorry, there was this George Perry who went to Queensland Uni. Yeah. I've done like him for him. Glory to God. Oh, God is good. Mm, he is. He is. You've got to try something new. Yes. You've got to take risk. Mm, amen. Being a Christian, being a believer, is risky living. Preach it. Risky living. Yes, it is. Praise God. Hallelujah. Even going to uni wasn't easy because I'm in the same problem with legs. Yeah, sweet, yeah, yeah. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Talking to baseball. Yeah. Or remember the old clay to chrome slides? You put all the slides in the yeah. projector and you put them up there. The rooms are all black. And somewhere down there in that dark little corner is the lecturer talking away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. That was going to get through. So I went to the lectures and said, Explain my situation. So they organised special tutorials for me, one on one. Wow, praise wow. God. Unheard of. Yeah. But now I can see with God working in behind the scenes. Yes. yes. Leading me on towards yes. His purposes yes. in life. Yes. God is good. He is. He is. I mean, He doesn't make it easy for you, but He's full of surprises. That's right. Preach it. Because I'm colourblind, red, green, colourblind. Right. And when you're doing pathology, looking at all these diseased tissues, yeah. you don't want to be colourblind. <laughs> to, to, yep. Especially when you're doing your pathology exam. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> all the way through uni, I got passes and credits. Wow. Scraping through nicely. Until my final year, when we had that pathology exam. I got my ugliest distinction. I have no. <laughs> <laughs> I got my ugliest distinction. Oh my God. And after I came below, and I said, Was this you? He said, Yep. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. He, uh, uh, he's been so good. 
in the country town and open up my own veterinary practice. So we started up running well mm. Wow. God was there too. Hallelujah. Leading me on. Mm. Look, I don't like to boast of anything, but seriously, people tell me from Wolga that they haven't stopped talking about me. Hallelujah. Because of all the miracles that have happened, how God was with me even before I knew him. Amen. He was with me in the veterinary practice. Thank you, Jesus. And I Amen. grew up and I wanted to be a fine, upstanding citizen in this small town of Wolga, 1,500 people. <laughs> so I joined up in Rotary. Yeah. I joined up on the hospital board. I joined up with the local Anglican church. Good luck. So I was appointed to be one of the wardens for the local Anglican church. And the thing about country church is you run out of money very quickly. <laughs> Normally you have enough money for a minister for three years and then you go without one for three years while you raise up money for another minister for another three years. It was a cycle. Yeah. <laughs> Anthony probably experienced that in his time in Canaveral, in Galagabar. Yes. So being a warden, I had to do some preaching. And after a while, I felt like a hypocrite. Because mm. I didn't have a relationship with God. Mm. I was doing everything out of my civic duty to the community. Mm. I was a religious person. Mm. Then I went on a holiday to Port Macquarie. And I thought, I might go to church there too. The Anglican, the Anglican Church in Port Macquarie. And I listened carefully to the sermon made some notes, I've got some nice material to take back to Rolga to preach. <laughs> I even went to the Bible study so as I could get some more notes. Yeah. And halfway through the Bible study, there was a table for us, about six to eight of us at the table, and a few tables of people in one of the church halls. And my husband, Hondo, and I asked a question, the minister, the senior minister was on that table, that table. He didn't answer that question, he just looked at me. He said, are you born again? I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm Anglican, I'm, I'm a warden, I'm, 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 you know, I've been preaching and stuff. He totally ignored that. He just said to me again, are you born again? I mean, I remember the minister talking about, you don't need to talk about that stuff. We don't talk about being born again in the Anglican Church. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was confused. Yeah. So he asked me one more time, are you born again? I said, well, obviously, no, I'm not. <laughs> Would you like to be born again? Well, that makes you think, don't it? Yes, amen. What have I got to lose? Mm -hmm. Well, that was the worst thing I ever said. <laughs> I said, yes. He got you then. Then afterwards, I realised I lost everything. <laughs> <laughs> you lose your life. Yes, but you gained You died to Christ, and you're no longer are who live, but Christ who lives in me. Amen. So, yeah, mm. and I did not regret that decision, <laughs> even though I thought I'd lost nothing yeah. when I made the decision. <laughs> but then God spoke to me next morning, he himself, Father himself, spoke to me while I was having a lovely shower. Oh, wow. Ben, you born again. Yeah. That's interesting. Then I hear this voice. Who are you? I didn't have my hearing aid on. I'm deaf, totally deaf. But you hear something. What's going on here? I open the shower door, open the bathroom door, put my head out and around. 
nobody there. Go back and take my shower. Who are you? Much better for it. I can't say like he does. He said so beautifully, so lovingly. Mm. <laughs> I said, I've ignored. <coughs> so, a third time. Why is it three times? <laughs> Who are you? Oh. Oh, you got to me. Who am I? I'm your child. Holy Spirit just came upon me. I was totally soaked and baptized in the Holy Spirit on the spot. I didn't even ask for it. I didn't even know what it was. I also knew that something so incredibly wonderful happened. So for joy, changed my life completely.